What's up, guys? Welcome to episode number one of the podcast series. Um, I'll be uploading here to YouTube and to the different podcast sites. So if you don't want to watch it, you can listen to it while driving in the car or wherever you are on the move. So it's just a different outlet where we're going to explore and uh, go through a lot more information. So this first one I want to go through is how to fall asleep like the military within two minutes. Now, there are a few videos on this. But I found the actual article and the book where this was originally published. Now, this was published in 1981, a book called Relax and Win, Championship Performance. So we all know how vital it is to get a good night's sleep. Uh, if you're struggling to sleep, your, your day is going to be affected. Your mental ability, your thinking ability is going to be affected. Your mood, you feel very irritable and grumpy. And I just overall wellness your immune system goes down you get sick more often so there are a lot of things that get affected and uh, this article this book that was published in the article that was written uh, it's really helped me as well because me personally having thoracic outlet syndrome uh, the struggle that you have to fall asleep is insane I was getting about one hour two hours sleep a night and the only way I could get comfortable was on the floor in the lounge now that's not ideal because you wake up with a sore body, but at least I was getting some sleep eventually. But your next day is affected and you're in so much pain from your injury that you already have, that getting sleep, it, it eventually becomes a mental factor where you know that you need to sleep, you know you need to get up the next day, and it just starts playing in your mind that when you go to bed, you know you're going to start struggling with the pain, then you know you have to wake up early, and it just all these things, I used to describe it as a, as a Ferris wheel. You've got all these thoughts going through your mind, and each cart on the Ferris wheel is, is a thought. So you're thinking about getting up in the next morning, and the next thought is the pain that you're going to experience. And you've got all these thoughts, and then it goes in a cycle. You think about getting up in the morning again, and it just rotates through your mind like a Ferris wheel. So this article and these steps have really helped me personally because I'm sleeping a lot better now, but... I go to bed very late, I'm a night owl, and sometimes when you cannot sleep and you're already going to bed so late, those few hours are critical to fall asleep quickly so that you can wake up feeling refreshed. So I've tried these steps and I'm not one that can fall asleep very quickly. I toss and turn for probably half an hour to 45 minutes before I can actually fall asleep. So doing these steps, I was actually, I started doing these steps and I wasn't even through all the steps and I was already fast asleep. I'd wake up the next morning and think, wow, I actually stepped right through. Like I didn't even remember falling asleep. It was just quick. So this does help work and it does help you. You just got to relax your mind to a point where you just got to go with it and flow with it and, and really get yourself immersed into that relaxed state of mind. And if you do the steps over the weeks, like the military in the article, they take six weeks of training and eventually at the end of those six weeks, they can literally fall asleep sitting in a chair. They can fall asleep wherever they are because being on the battlefield, they need their sleep because the next day they're going to they're gonna really struggle and their lives depend on it. So if these tips can work for the most stressful situations, they can definitely work for the rest of us that are dealing with day-to-day -day stresses, but not to the extremes where your life is in danger if you don't fall asleep and get a good, night, good night's rest. So there are six main steps to follow, and they're pretty simple. It's just about relaxing your body and thinking about the most relaxed environments and making yourself feel comfortable in those relaxed environments. So you're basically just tricking your body and your mind to relax to a state where you're just letting go and falling asleep naturally like anybody that could fall asleep easily does anyway. So... Okay, we're going to go through the steps. It's very simple. It is the easiest thing. And it's things you don't even think about. So step number one is relaxing the muscles in your face, relaxing your forehead. And this was a big thing for me because I didn't even realize how tense my forehead was when going to bed. You frown so much. You're thinking about everything in your mind and you're frowning without even realizing it. So this step really was something that helped me a lot because I was frowning so much. I lay down and the first thing I do was think about relaxing the muscles in my forehead. And when I 
when I thought about it, I couldn't really do it. So what I would do is frown more, think about something, frown, and just touch my forehead and feel everything relaxing. So once you've got that, that feel of tensing and relaxing, it actually feels like your whole face is starting to relax anyway. So that's step number one, relaxing the muscles in your face, especially concentrating on your forehead. The next thing is relaxing your eyes and the muscles in your eye sockets. Now, it seems strange, but once you get the hang of it and you feel the muscles, you'll also feel it's like the muscles in your forehead that you're actually tensing and you, you well, even with your eyes closed, you're looking in a certain direction. So what you have to do is just squeeze your eyes maybe. What I, This is what I've done. Squeeze them, relax them, squeeze them, relax them, and eventually you'll you'll feel that squeezing and relaxing you get to feel those muscles working so when you're thinking of relaxing them it just loosens up and your eyes relax and your forehead relaxes and everything just feels a lot more relaxed so getting your facial facial muscles relaxed is step number one and it's key you got to relax your jaw because more than likely you you are clenching your jaw and grinding your teeth or you're doing something without realizing it you think you're relaxed until you actually go through these steps of relaxing your face piece by piece and the muscles and the jaw. And you'll notice that once you've done that, your whole body already feels so much more relaxed and, and gets into that relaxed state of mind to fall asleep. So step number one, relax your facial muscles, starting from your forehead all the way down to your jaw. Even open your jaw, wiggle it around, move it side to side. And you're going to feel a huge difference already. From there, you're going to drop down your shoulders as far as they'll go. So I forgot to mention, starting on your back. If you can't sleep on your back, I've done this on my side, but preferably on your back so that you can drop your shoulders down as low as they can go. Because without realizing it, you're probably sitting with your shoulders up and you get so used to it that the muscle memory keeps your shoulders up even when you're sleepy you're probably laying like this so pull your shoulders down as far as they can go really lengthen your neck and that's just going to help take all the pressure off your neck and your shoulders and just relax your whole upper body basically once you've done that you are going to go start from your upper arm one side at a time and relax all the way down so just feel that relaxation traveling down your arm on the top side and then feel it going down the bottom side and you're going to do both arms and just relax. Take a nice breath of air, fill your lungs. Remember to use your diaphragm, not your scalene muscles and your upper chest. Um, I've got another video, I'll put it in the description of how to practice your diaphragmic breathing because that is also a huge factor. If you're, not bre if you're breathing with your chest and your chest is rising, you're not getting enough oxygen you're not your body's not functioning at the optimal level if you look at a baby um, their stomachs rise and fall so that's what you want to practice put one hand on your chest one hand on your stomach and the one in your stomach should rise and fall not the one in your chest and that is another factor but i've covered that in another video because that's an entire topic by itself so take a nice breath of air diaphragmic breathing and then you want to breathe out just relax and then just breathe normally and, and feel that air filling up your lungs and you're going to feel a lot more relaxed when you're focusing on that breath. That's almost like mindfulness where you are aware of what your body's doing and that relaxed state. Um, it just gets your mind thinking about the whole body and gets you into that peaceful state of mind to fall asleep. Once you've done that, you can start relaxing your legs starting from your thighs working all the way down and just feel that relaxation feel those muscles relaxing if you can't visualize it tense that tense your thighs and relax them and then do that a few times so you can actually feel that muscle just relaxing completely now once you've relaxed your whole body once you've started from your head all the way down done your breathing you want to then clear your mind so in the article they say spend 10 seconds trying to clear your mind before thinking about one of the following situations. So there are three scenarios where you are visualizing. Now you've relaxed your body. Now you're going to visualize that you are somewhere else. So situation number one is you're lying on a canoe on a lake and it's a very calm lake, 
Money is going to affect you. There's no crocodiles. Picture it as even your swimming pool outside and you've got this nice safe canoe that you're laying on and looking up at the stars and the sky and you're just gently floating. That slight rocking motion, just peaceful, calm. You can hear nature sounds and you're just laying there all relaxed, slight movement looking up at the sky. Um, just get, you, get yourself feeling like you're actually there. If you are not one for the water and that freaks you out, situation number two is you're lying on a black velvet hammock in a pitch black room. So imagine that you're laying in this cabin, maybe in Canada while it's snowing outside. You've got that soft snow falling outside. You've got a fire going. You're laying in this black velvet soft hammock, just slightly gently rocking, and you are so cozy while it's ice cold outside. So... You've relaxed your body, put your mind in that, in that mindset, and you can actually feel like thinking about that situation starts making you sleepy already. Like you already feel like, oh yeah, that's nice and cozy. Or if you're on the canoe, you feel like that rocky motion is just so nice and peaceful on the water. Uh, I'm for one, love the water. So that's what I would be thinking about. And then if you don't have a good imagination and you can't visualize that and you are not feeling super relaxed already and you can't get your mind to stop, you can't get that ferris wheel of thoughts to stop you want to just say to yourself don't think now you can just repeat that you just say don't think don't think don't think and that's just to get your mind focusing on those words saying don't think and not focusing on everything else so relax your body and just say don't think don't think and eventually you're gonna get to that state where you're so relaxed you're not really thinking about anything except saying don't think so it gets you focusing on one thing, which will end up drifting off and falling asleep. So the study was used and it has worked on 96% of people. So it really does work. I mean, I, for one, cannot fall asleep easily and this has worked for me. So I know that this does work if you really do do it on a, on a nightly basis and practice. If you're having a nap in the day or you just need to try get yourself more relaxed before an exam or a test or something. Just try these techniques of just thinking about relaxing your whole body and clearing your mind. You don't have to go to the point where you're trying to fall asleep. You can just clear your mind. And this is a, a slight way to get your, your mind rid of thoughts and just relax and stop thinking so much. And it will just give you like a, a, a almost like a power nap without actually napping. You're just clearing your mind and letting go of all the, the stresses of life and stuff. So give it a try. Um, what else do we have here? I'm just looking through this article. There were a few other points that I wanted to mention. But uh, those are basically the steps. You're basically just re relaxing your mind, thinking about as little as possible while putting yourself in a situation where it's the most relaxed situation. And it's just going to help you overall. So, okay, I think that is it. I think uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. But uh, stay tuned, please subscribe, because I have got a whole series where I'm going to go in depth with thoracic outlet syndrome and the different symptoms, the different uh, things that you might not think affect you when you have one injury. You might be experiencing a whole bunch of other things like dizziness and shortness of breath. And there's a lot of things that are extremely worrying and scary, but can usually be tracked down to one specific thing because our bodies work on a kinetic chain so if you've got i always use this analogy because people don't seem to realize that our body works on this kinetic chain so if your foot gets affected you might walk a bit funny you might not walk properly and that puts extra pressure on your ankle which in turn puts pressure on your knee and then eventually you might have a little bit of knee pain and you're compensating and then suddenly you've got hip pain and lower back pain and it works way up. And it can also work its way down. So if you've got a shoulder injury, you're also not swinging your arm when you're walking. You might walk a bit stiff and your rib cage is not working properly because you're breathing with your upper chest and scalenes and your rib cage doesn't expand as much as it can. So you start getting pains shooting through the front to the back because your ribs are getting stuck and fixed in place where they should be moving and it's your body's like fighting that and eventually you've got all these problems where you, it originated with your shoulder or a problem in your neck and you don't even realize that it's worked this way so far that 
you're walking with a limp because you've got knee pains and, and hip pains. So I will discuss all of this and I'm, I'm taking all the questions that I've been asked over the years and I'm just going to compile this podcast. I'm going to try to get some, some guests on here as well uh, in a proper studio and we can uh, discuss and get more awareness about all these injuries and how our bodies work and how to, to do things by yourself at home naturally without always having to rush to the doctor and you can just fix yourself and not worry so much. I'm going to cover anxiety, panic attacks, and just how to calm your body down, how to calm your mind down, get yourself through the situations where you can get your life back, um, get rid of anxiety, social awkwardness, whatever the case may be, and just get to a point where you're not worried about anything. You get a little injury, you sort yourself out, you're back on the road, you're not getting stuck inside the house and just deteriorating further. So please turn on the notification bell to get an update. I will post all the links of where this podcast is if you're not watching. On YouTube, there will be links to to different uh, podcast sites where you can just listen to this. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. So please subscribe and share it as much as you can um, because I can't get my videos out to everybody. And being such a small channel, it's very difficult to share it and get the people that really need it out there. It's It's easy to just share things and everyone just scrolls past it. But when you're actually suffering with something and, and struggling with an injury and you're trying to find the answers, um, it's very difficult if you don't know where to look. So if you know somebody that's struggling, please share it and uh, get it out there because it's information that I wish I had when I was struggling. That's why I have studied further and, and doing these videos is to help those people because I know where I was phoning around the world for help and, and looking to anywhere I could just to help me. And I wish I had a YouTube channel that I could just search and find all the answers and find everything that I needed. But there, there literally, there just wasn't. So that's where I started. And uh, I think this will help so many people that I think it's worth it. So I will see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. And I will see you in episode two where we discuss a few more topics.